Hey guys, this video has been brought to you by Verve, an awesome platform full of your favorite shows and channels like Cartoon Hangover, Crunchyroll, and Rooster Teeth. Go to verve.co slash domics for a free 30-day trial of premium. When I was a kid, probably like 11 or 12, I went to this party with a bunch of family friends. I think it was someone's birthday, I, I don't really remember, but I had this friend there. We'll call him CJ. At some point during the party, the dance floor became open and the DJ was letting loose with them beats. Not by Dre. I wasn't much of a party person, much less a dancer, so I just remained at my table, probably beating Pokemon Red for the 8th time on my Game Boy. I was seated next to CJ and his family, and I overheard his dad say, Shh, hey, I'll give you 10 bucks if you do your thing. By the way, Filipinos don't go psst to get your attention like normal people. They go shh like they're shooting a tranquilizer dart from their mouth. It's more effective, you should try it. And with no hesitance, CJ took the bill and walked to the dance floor. And I was like, oh, he's probably gonna do the Macarena or something. Nani? What the? What? What the? F Yo! Oh my gulai. Dude. Dude. CJ was such a cool kid, man. He was only a year older than me and, well, actually he still is, I, I guess that's, that's how age should work. Random memory, I remember being on the school bus in elementary and this kid was picking on this girl who, side note, had a newborn baby brother. I don't know why I remember that, and she retorted with, When my brother grows up, he's gonna kick your butt. And I just thought, doesn't, does, does she not know that this kid will get older and bigger too? Unless she intended on him getting that much older and her her brother who would be like of a younger, more healthy age would beat this senior version of this bully. That's a long time to hold a grudge. I don't condone bullying, but that interaction was pretty funny. Anyway, I really looked up to CJ as a kid. I didn't see him often, but I remember him being one of the coolest guys around my age. CJ comes back from his set and everyone was complimenting him, and I think that's when I thought, Man, I want to be that cool. So then I became a YouTuber. The end. <laughs> ah, okay, I'm sorry. Alright, I wanted to learn how to break dance, but I didn't really have anyone to practice with. CJ lived kind of far, my friends weren't interested, and it wasn't until I moved to Virginia in 11th grade that I found people that shared my interest. I just thought b-boys and b-girls were so cool. Just the idea that whenever there was a random dance-off, whether it be on the streets or at a wedding reception, you could kick someone's ass without violence. Dude, that's poetic. Not to say the purpose of breakdancing is to create hostility between people, quite the opposite actually. From my experience, b-boying has helped me befriend a lot of people along with helping me break, pun intended, out of my timid shell. I found out that CJ actually took classes to learn breakdancing, and I thought, my parents would never approve of me doing that. I knuckle, you're just going to break your bones. And they were already paying for my Taekwondo classes, so I had to learn on my own. So when I was 16, I had my friend Min from my Taekwondo class, and my two friends Daniel and Kenny, whom I befriended in my tech class of mixed grades. We all got pretty close, and I remember going to Daniel's house pretty much every other day to just have sessions, which we mostly came out of with bruises. But it was still fun. Not too long later, more friends joined us. Jay, whom I found really annoying at first because he called me Porcupine Head at the halls when I barely even knew him, and Taryn, who now actually dances professionally and teaches classes for hip-hop dance and choreography. What the heck? I used to play Smash with this guy. So proud of you, Taryn. At face value, my reasons for wanting to learn how to b-boy might have been a little shallow. A lot of dancers give you this whole speech about expressing yourself and having an outlet for your emotions, and while I don't disagree and actually find great truth in that, honestly, I, I just wanted to be cool. I mean, it wasn't work, I had fun with it. I was a new kid in a new school in a new country. I didn't exactly make many friends in the two years I lived in Virginia, but I'm glad I got to know who I did. I wanted to leave my mark. I thought b-boys and b-girls were so freaking awesome, and I too wanted to be awesome. I've mentioned this in previous videos, but I was a really shy and introverted kid who got bullied often because I was short and an easy target. I thought anyone who could breakdance had this sort of 
aura of respectable intimidation. I was tired of being disrespected. I wanted people to know that there was more to me than my size. All right, you're probably thinking, oh, so you used to break dance, huh, Dom? You was a b-boy, huh? Well, let's see you do some head spins and air flares. Nah, I was really more into the style and footwork aspects of b-boying. Not to bag on powerheads, but I really disliked it when that's all some people could do. They had no sense of rhythm or flavor. They weren't hitting the beat, nah, mean. Of course, backflips and windmills have their wow factors, but if that's all you can do, then you're, you're just doing moves that happen to be accompanied with background music. I didn't think they were dancing. And so I had great respect for style heads who had really unique sets that involved movements I didn't know was possible with the human body. But hey, power moves are still amazing to witness. Some of my favorite b-boys to watch in the past were Ronnie, Hong Ten, Lilu, Taisuke, and Born, Redfoot, and Physics of the Rivers crew. I watched these guys almost every day and I just thought, I wanna be that cool! It was 2007 and with the new YouTube platform at the time, watching other b-boys and crews were more accessible and so it was really useful when trying to teach ourselves how to do certain moves. One of my Taekwondo teachers even gave me his VHS collection of b-boy films and tutorials and even let us use the floor for a few minutes after class to practice moves that would otherwise break our hips if we didn't have the mats to soften our falls. Shout out to you Mr. Dudla, you the best! Every year at Freedom High School, they held International Night, an event that showcased performances by students representing many different cultures. My friends and a few others banded together and created Collaboration. I don't remember who named it and I don't get why because Karen's black as fuck. Anyway, Collaboration represented the hip hop dance culture for International Night. And while I didn't take part in my junior year, I did perform with everyone in my senior year. I think it was my first time performing a dance like that to an audience, and I definitely had the jitters before getting on stage. But much like the adrenaline I got in track and field, my ultra instinct kicked in as we went up. We kicked ass. Along with our overall choreography, we each had our solos and got our individual moments in the spotlight. And in hindsight, it probably wasn't the best performance, and we did make small mistakes, but regardless, it was definitely the highlight of my high school years. It was then that I felt I achieved coolness. Granted, it was near the end of my senior year, but I cherished it nonetheless. Even before that performance, Daniel gave our b-boy group a name. Notice our style, the NOS crew. And after International Night, we continued to do other small performances at local events and charities during summer break. I eventually had to move back to Canada for university, and even then I still continued to practice and try to look for b-boy communities to meet new people. And when I visited Virginia every now and then, I'd session with the crew and go to battles. But eventually, the weight of my school workload led me to stop. It's unfortunate, but breakdancing will always remain a part of my childhood and early adulthood. And every once in a while I look back and think, damn, I'm still not as cool as CJ. This video has been brought to you by Verve. For a limited time, go to verve.co slash domics or click the link in the description to get a 30 day, that's right, one month of premium membership. Verve gives you access to ad free channels such as Crunchyroll, Rooster Teeth, Funimation, Cartoon Hangover, and Curiosity Stream. You know, I love my anime, so given the option to choose between Crunchyroll subs or Funimation's dubs, I can watch some of my favorite shows in the background while I work because I, I, I don't understand Japanese, okay? I was excited to find out that Harmon Quest was available on Verve. A friend showed me an episode the other week and I was instantly hooked. It's made by Dan Harmon, who also made Community and Rick and Morty. So if that's the kind of humor you're into, I recommend checking it out. Verve also allows offline viewing for iOS and Android devices, meaning you can sync episodes ahead of time so you can watch them later without needing internet. If you guys have any other show recommendations, please let me know in the comments below. Once again, that's verve.co slash domics, link below, enjoy!